Hi, I'm Estelle. Welcome to Stellar Yoga and this class on new beginnings. I'm filming this class in January, but it is an appropriate class for any time in which you feel like taking stock of where you are and thinking about reviewing the past and what you want for the future. Um, and what I'd like to encourage today the new beginnings are often a time in which people make resolutions, promises to themselves, and a lot of times these resolutions focus on how you can be a better you, how you can be better or be different. And I'd really like to invite you for this practice at the very least, but also potentially in planning and being reflective in your new beginnings, in thinking about acceptance. And when I talk about acceptance and when we talk about acceptance in yoga, we don't mean a resignation or a giving up um, and just kind of accepting what, what things are. But what we mean is sitting with what is and not wishing it were different. So uh, there's a very good uh, Pema Chodron book um, in which she has a chapter about this and she talks about being with what is without wishing it were different, you know, being, feeling the heat in the air without wishing you could be cooler, but just feeling it and just being with that. And I was reading this book uh, in Croatia on the beach in this beautiful lagoon in a yoga retreat and a, in that lagoon, in that harbor, I was trying to have, you know, a peaceful moment and be reflective and thoughtful. And there was this huge party boat just across from me with this thumping loud music. And the whole time I had been reading, I had been thinking, oh, if only that music could stop. It's so annoying. I'm trying to be reflective. It's so intrusive. And I got to this point in, in her teachings about, you know, what if you just sat with what is without wishing it were different? And just accepting that this is how things are. Right now, it's like this. And it was a really interesting moment to practice that because I had a very uh, appropriate opportunity in which to, to put that lesson into work. And I would invite you to try doing that yourself uh, when you find yourself in a challenging situation. But also when you're thinking about setting intentions or goals or resolutions, in yoga, there isn't always a talk of God, but there is a talk of Atman. And Atman is translated in different ways. Some people think of that as God, but it also means the highest self. So I would really encourage you to think of how can you honor your highest self? How can you be your highest self? How can you accept yourself, accept things as they are right now? not wishing them to be different, but just sitting with them as they are and honoring your truth, honoring who you are right now and how you are right now without wishing that you could be different. And maybe using that as a basis for setting intentions or resolutions rather than thinking about how you wish things were different, how you wish you were different. What if you started from a place of this is how I am right now. How can I honor that? How can I care for that? How can I make space for that? So I would invite you to put those reflections into practice today. We'll be doing some poses which are, can challenge balance, which can challenge strength. And I would really invite you to go into those in the spirit of not trying to make them look perfect or feel perfect or match some image in your mind, but just exploring where you are today. Where is your body today? Where does your leg want to go today without wishing it were different, without trying to force it to be something you're not, but just honoring where you are today without judgment. So uh, this class is also a bit inspired by Florida, which is where I found myself in the new year. I did not intend to find myself there. I was supposed to be back home in Geneva. 
but I tested positive for COVID at the day I was supposed to fly home. And so I found myself staying in Florida and actually it was a really wonderful, unexpected, calm time to just hang out with my sister and her husband. And I really am grateful for the time that I had there. But I spent a couple hours on New Year's Day um, taking a, a yoga class, uh, which I lost connection to after the first hour. And so I just moved based on the things that I saw around me. And so this class is inspired by a lot of the flora and fauna of Florida. So let's get started. Please find a comfortable seat or a resting position. It doesn't have to be a seat. You can be on your back. You can be in a chair. Just someplace where you feel like you can take a moment to center. If you feel comfortable, I'll invite you to close your eyes or to soften your gaze to a spot on the floor. And just take a couple breaths here to find yourself in this moment. You might use the sensation of touch to find yourself in this moment. So feeling your sit bones or your feet on the ground, feeling the earth pressing back into them, feeling your hands on your lap or your knees. You might instead use sound. You might hear birds chirping or water running or wind blowing. And that helps you find yourself in this moment. You might use smell, the sense of the scent of your lotion on your body or humidity in the air, smoke or the scent of candle. So find what works for you today. You could also use interception, feeling the breath in your body, where it travels, where it's missing. So just find what is helping you anchor to this moment today. And take a moment here to check in with yourself. How are you feeling? What is happening in your mind? Is it easy to ground down today or is your mind racing or preoccupied with other things? Notice how your heart is feeling. If there is pain or grief or joy or relaxation, just notice what's happening with you and take a, a snapshot, just take a, a note in your mind without judging what it means, investigating the source, just noticing and then letting it go and coming back to your anchor. I'm gonna invite you to take three breaths in with me and then on the out breath to just hum. This is something that help, helps engage our vagus nerve and also activates the throat chakra, which is also where we find our sense of expression, of speaking our truth, and it's something that the vagus nerve innervates and helps control. And it can help bring a sense of calm, grounding. And so we're going to just take a breath in 
And as you exhale, keeping your lips together, just humming outwards, maybe feeling vibration in your lips. Let's go ahead and take your first breath in when you're ready. Take a breath in and let it go through your nose as usual. Just notice here how your body feels, how your mind feels. And when you feel ready, we'll start bringing some gentle movement in, starting with just some gentle rolls of the head from side to side. Slowly just waking up your neck. If it feels good, you can take it all the way around and back. But if part of your body isn't ready for that today, just do what feels good for your body. Honoring where it's at. You can move this into the shoulders or down the spine, bringing it back into some of this. Maybe moving your torso in some gentle circles. Starting to wake up your body, maybe your hips as you roll your spine around. But if you notice that there's a part of that that doesn't honor where you're at today, be gentle with yourself. And don't push that. And move the other way if you haven't started doing that yet. Notice if that's similar or different. Again, you can bring the shoulders into this. You can bring twists. You can start to slowly, just gently flow from side to side. Feeling if you want to bring the shoulders into that or not. Noticing if that feels good. And just waking up where your body needs some waking up. You can bring some twists into it. And this isn't making any specific shape. You can sort of feel like you're underwater, exploring, floating, twisting. Gently moving, just finding out where you are today and moving in a way that feels good to you. And at the same time, there's some creaky spots that feels good where you'd like some movement. If you like, you can stretch your legs out a little bit. Start to bring them into it. Waking up your hip joints, rolling. Rolling the legs around. Twisting. Reaching. And 
And when you're ready, go ahead and come down onto your back. So as you find yourself on your back, just let your feet come to a comfortable distance apart. Bring one knee in. Hug it in towards your armpit. Doesn't have to be in any specific angle. And see how it feels to stretch the other leg long. And just play around here. See how it feels good. Some compression there. If it feels better, you can hold it on, on your thigh. You can even, if you want, have a strap here to just bring your leg around, play with that. And then go ahead and just straighten your leg up towards the sky, holding on to the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. And again, just playing with what it feels like to move that to the side. You can take a hold of your toe if you'd like keeping the leg bent or playing around with straightening it. And again, just noticing where your body is today, what feels good and where its limitations are and honoring that. Just noticing, not judging. When you're ready, bring both feet back to the floor, your knees bent. Take a moment to check in with how you're feeling. And then we'll take that on the other side, drawing your knee in, bringing it sort of towards your armpit so it's not straight up and down, but again, playing around with those angles and finding where the, the nice spots are for you in your body. And then see how it feels straightening the other leg while you do that, if that changes anything. All of our hips are so incredibly different and unique. The hip joint, the shape of the ball and the socket. So it's really important to figure out where feels good to you rather than just picking 45 degrees or 90 degrees or a specific degree or shape. I'm just finding what works in your body. And then again, play around with straightening that leg. You can support it from behind the thigh. You can use a strap. You can try moving it out to the side, supporting it in different ways, bending it at different ankles. You can bring your ankle into it. Not going too far, respecting and honoring where your body's limitations limits are today. Seeing if anything pops or cracks. And then when you're ready, go ahead and bring both feet to the ground again. Again, check in with how you feel. If there's anything to notice. And then gently, when you're ready, you can roll to one side. Come up and move on to all fours to take a little bit of bends, cat and cow, just moving here in a way that feels good to you. You can have the toes tucked or not. So you can move into a traditional cat and cow in and out. You can move side to side, finding the length in the side body. And then we're gonna do our first kind of uh, Florida inspired movement here, taking some porpoising sort of cat cows. So sort of like a dolphin rising out of the water, coming up, 
and then rounding back, just like a dolphin rounding and then coming up to the surface. And you can play around with this. It doesn't have to be straight. You could also round forward and arch back. So just find a little bit of playful movement. Porpoises are very playful animals. So just find where your body is today, what it wants to do. And practice some porpoising. I was really lucky to see some dolphins in the river when we went kayaking in Florida. It's amazing how they move through the water. So just have some fun of your own porpoising. And then come back to center. And we're just going to take a little bit of stabilizing movement. So go ahead and straighten your right leg back. You can bring your left arm forward. And at any point, you can come back. So this is sort of the starting point. And then you can play with lifting up your leg. You can play with lifting up your arm. You can play with lifting up both. Just finding where you are, again, without judging. And then if you want to play a little bit more, try taking the leg, whoop, the leg and the arm both to the side, avoiding any lamps. And when you're ready, come down, take a rest. We'll come to the other side. So stretch your left leg out. And then you can play with lifting the right arm, with lifting the left leg. You can always go back from there. And if you want, try taking both the arm and the legs out to the side. And then bringing them back long and coming down. And here we'll just sit back towards our heels, slowly walk back towards a squat, and then go ahead, drop your head and slowly just come into a kind of ragdoll pose, letting your head drop. You can turn it to different directions. You can just let it hang. You could bring your hands to the back of your neck if that feels good. Kind of traction your spine a little bit. And when you're ready, just slowly, slowly roll up. Little by little. Gently, gently moving into a vertical relationship with gravity. So from here, we're gonna take some grounding postures. When we're starting a new year, a new month, a new chapter, it can be really helpful to feel grounded before we move forward into new things. So we'll take a chair pose and just come into a comfortable standing position. Your feet can be angled at whatever angle feels natural to you. And they can be any distance apart that feels comfortable and stable. So if someone pushed you, came up, if you were on the subway, um, this would feel like a, like a stable position. And then when you're ready, you can inhale your arms up. And exhale, sit down into your chair. Just notice how it feels to be in this position. Take a couple breaths. And if you'd like, you can try taking an airplane chair for three breaths 
otherwise you can stay here. So if you want to, you bring your arms back behind you and you come up onto your tiptoes. You can just try this again and see where you are today. And roll back down and bring your arms. Exhale, bring your arms back, come up to your tiptoes. Inhale your arms up. And one more time. Bringing your arms back, coming up, rising up. And bringing your arms Eva really likes my mat. Sometimes she likes it a little bit too much. So from here, we're gonna come into a goddess pose. So go ahead and bring, step your feet wide. And again, a comfortable wide stance. Your feet can be angled at whatever is a naturally comfortable angle for your body, your hip sockets, your joints. And when you're ready, we're gonna rise up with an inhale with our arms and sink down into a prayer squat. We'll do that three times. Inhale again, sink down, feel yourself rooting into the earth. One more time, rising up. Sink down and this time we're gonna stay here can come into goddess arms if you want. You can adjust your legs if you need to. And we'll take a few breaths here, just feeling rooted, grounded. Feel your feet like trees, growing strong roots into the earth, drawing energy up from the soil. If you want, you can Try rising up to your tiptoes here, playing with your balance. Coming back down, taking one more breath here. And when you're ready, slowly rising back up. Now that we've grown lots of roots into the earth, we're going to take tree pose. So go ahead and come on to one side. I'm going to start on my right. You can bring your, your left foot to your ankle, your shin, or anywhere up the leg that feels good to you. Make sure that your standing leg isn't ramrod straight, isn't locked, but there's some movement there. And you can feel like your foot and your leg are pressing against each other. When I was doing this, I was in the shade of a beautiful oak tree. So I'm going to ask you to envision yourself as a tree. And notice that when your branches grow, they don't open to the sky, but the leaves are all facing down and hanging and absorbing the sun, but the heart of the tree is open to the sky. So play around with maybe your favorite tree. Think of your favorite tree and the shape of it. So maybe that's a pine tree and your arms are out to the side or an oak tree where you have these heavy hanging leaves, but the the heart of the tree is open to the sun. And just find where you are today. Just notice without judging. And when you're ready, let your hands come down to your sides, let your leaves fall. And find your both feet on the ground again. Take a breath here. And we'll come onto the other side. 
you're doing the same leg as me, and that's the left leg. Bring your right foot anywhere on your leg. You can also have it resting on the ground, so your toe is touching the ground and just the heel resting on your ankle. Feeling that left leg a little bit bent, pliable, so that it can move like a tree trunk. It adapts to the wind. It's not like steel. Even in steel buildings, they're made to have a little bit of flex. So keep that leg not locked. And the thigh or the calf or the ankle, the leg pressing back against the foot. And then again, feel those roots and your feet rooting into the earth. And feel the energy of the earth again drawing up into whatever kind of tree you're envisioning today. Feeling you're an oak tree with those clumps of leaves reaching out, hanging downwards, but lifting your heart to the sun. And just notice what's happening on this side. So our next pose is inspired by the pink spoonbills, which are naturally pink birds you find in Florida. There isn't a spoonbill pose that I'm aware of, but there's a flamingo pose, so we're gonna try that. So come on, just like you had in your tree pose, onto the one leg, so for me it's the right leg. And just like we did on the ground, go ahead and give your, bend your left knee and give it a squeeze into your chest. So traditional flamingo pose starts with a bind around the leg, but because that requires a hyperextension of your shoulder, uh, which can be certainly damaging over long term and not accessible to a lot of people unless you're hypermobile, we're going to start with, we're going to have our, our arms just in a normal healthy orientation for the shoulder girdle and for the shoulder um, socket. Go ahead and squeeze that, that leg in to the extent you can. And then, again, making sure your right leg isn't locked, you're gonna to start to fold over from, from the hips. And any degree that you go over is fine. Just play around with where you are today. You can come parallel to the ground. You can play with your gaze. Notice how your right leg is feeling. Flamingo feels in this pose, maybe looking for tasty tidbits to eat in the water. When you're ready, with control, slowly come back to your starting position. Go ahead and let your leg down. And you can go ahead and shake your legs out a little bit. Notice how your different sides feel. And then we'll go ahead and Try that on the other side. So standing onto your left leg, bringing your right knee up, giving it a squeeze in, finding where that squeeze should be today. And then making sure your left leg has a bit of movement and it's not locked. Playing around with the sense of curiosity and just exploration, not judgment with finding a fold in your hip, in your left hip. Find where your gaze wants to be for that. What your left leg does to root down to the earth and keep you stable. Noticing where you are today on this side. 
when you're ready. Rising up, hopefully with some control to where you started and letting your leg come down. And then to give your hip flexors a little bit of relaxation and uh, counter pose to that, go ahead and take your, stand onto your right leg, take your left ankle and your or left foot and your left hand. You could also bring your right hand into it if you want. And go ahead and pull that towards you. You can definitely hold on to something while you're doing this, holding onto a wall or a chair. You can always use a strap around this foot. And then just to bring a little bit more length, we're gonna reach that right arm up and kind of kick the left leg back. And you can Kick any amount you want. You can stay pretty straight. You can go forward. You can move more into a dancer pose. Just finding where your body wants to move today and what feels good, especially as a counterbalance to that flamingo. When you're ready, you can let that go. Coming back down to two feet finding your feet on earth, noticing how your body feels, noticing what's happening with your mind right now. And then we'll take that on the other side, so standing on the left leg, taking the right foot in the right hand, or right foot in a strap, and holding that with your right hand, and take both hands if you want pressing that knee backwards a little bit, just finding some length here. And then to take it further, if you want, you can bring your left hand up, reaching up. And if you want, you can kick that right leg back a little bit. Just finding the degree, noticing mechanically what happens as you lift that knee up, you tend to move forward, with your spine, just noticing and exploring with curiosity, without judgment, where you are today. And that feels good, and then when you're ready, you can let that go. And then we'll take another grounding but balance challenging posture now. We're going to come into palm tree, which I saw a lot of when I was practicing in Florida. So, like a Tadasana, you find your feet in a comfortable standing orientation, the angle that works for your body, the distance that works for your body, that feels stable. And then we're going to slowly rise up to our toes. So you can slowly rise up. Notice what that's like and you want to play with your hands as palm fronds, swaying in the breeze, you can do that. You can play with your gaze. Feeling this connection between the sky and the earth at the same time. Take one more Florida, uh, Flora inspired pose, and this is Bird of Paradise. So, again, it often has that shoulder bind which hyperextends the shoulder sockets. So, we're going to take a, a modified version. Again, come and stand on your right leg, squeeze that left knee in, and then Take a hold underneath the thigh and just play around with straightening that leg. So Bird of Paradise has these beautiful leaves that go out many angles. So if your leg is down here, that's totally fine. That 
that one of the leaves do that. If it's bent, I don't know if you've ever seen a bird of paradise flower, but there's a lot of beautiful angles. You can do that, or you can try to straighten it and just see what that feels like. But try to keep your torso straight, not compromising that, and just see where's your leg today and what does it want to do. And notice what's happening with your standing leg. And then go ahead, bend that knee and bring it back. Find your feet on the ground again, maybe give them a little shake. And then we'll take the other side, left leg. Go ahead and squeeze that right leg in, sort of towards your armpit. And then same thing, you can hold it from underneath and play with straightening it, keeping it at an angle, seeing what makes sense in your body today. The traditional bird of paradise has this shoulder bind and then you straighten your leg out. But that tends to uh, be a lot on people's shoulders. So you can try that if you wish. But of course, we are having this sense and spirit of exploration and curiosity today. So can find what feels good. You can always take the thigh from the other side, place the other hand on your low back, and try that and see what happens there. And when you're done exploring with some non-judgment, go ahead and let it go. Bring your feet back to the earth. Find both feet on the ground. At this moment in my practice in Florida, I paused thinking what to do next. And I saw there's a ton of little black lizards running around the garden. I thought that's exactly what I need right now, lizard pose. So go ahead, turn towards one side of your mat. I'm gonna start with the left leg to the front and step your right leg back and go ahead and put that right knee on the ground can keep the toes tucked or flat. You can walk that left foot out a little bit to the side. You can also keep it in. Just see what your body needs today. And give your hip flexor and your psoas a little bit of a counter pose from all of that work it did in the Bird of Paradise to straighten. Not going too far, just uh, finding what feels good what feels like a release or a relief and making any modifications that you need if this pose doesn't feel like that to you to find something that does. All of these yoga poses and instructions are suggestions and they should be taken as such. So feel free always. If it doesn't feel right in your body in anyone's class, do what you need to do to find anything, something that feels good to you, whether or not it looks like the pose that's being suggested. And when you're ready, we can switch sides. Go ahead and step the left leg back, bring the right leg forward. Again, you can walk that out to one side if you like. You can keep it more towards the middle. You can be angled. Just find what feels good. You want to bring arms into things, twists, whatever you're noticing that your body needs today. On this side, as you know, none of us are symmetrical beings. And go ahead and step both legs back so you're in a tabletop and slowly lower yourself down. There are a lot of poisonous snakes in Florida. Well, there are a lot of snakes. They're not all poisonous. There's only a couple poisonous ones. We're going to take a few rolling cobras just to explore that. So letting any kind of crease here in your hips happen, that's fine. Not forcing your butt down to the earth, but just from the back muscles. 
finding the lift of the shoulders and the chest. Again, not pushing down into your pelvis, letting this, this natural crease in your hip flexors exist. Just moving from the middle back and the upper back alone. Practicing with lowering and lifting here. And if you want, you can hold here, making sure this is soft. And bring your arms into this if you'd like. Can do a little snaky movement side to side if you like. And when you're ready, go ahead and lower all the way down, letting your head rest on your forehead in this crocodile pose. Some floor that they're alligators, but that's uh, flexible enough to be encountered in this pose too. And just take a couple breaths, noticing your full body against the floor. Letting go of tension where you find it. And then when you're ready, we're going to slowly roll into our backs. And we're going to take banana pose in honor of all of the beautiful voracious, huge banana trees you can see all over Florida. So go ahead and bring your, your feet to the lower left corner of your mat. But you swing your hips to the right and your shoulders to the left so that your body is making a kind of gentle banana shape. We're not pulling anything or forcing anything. We're just bringing a little bit of length. You can bring the right arm overhead and hold on to it with the left. But once you're here, go ahead and let go of everything. So you don't need to force it into a stretch. This is just a gentle curve. And you can direct your gaze anywhere that feels right for your body. So this is a really gentle lengthening of one side. Keeping both hips on the ground like a banana that's fallen from the tree. And you can close your eyes if you like. Just let the tension slowly drain out to the earth. Let that carry it away from you. Make a stream carrying you. Gently, slowly, we can move to the other side, coming back through 
center, taking a moment here to take stock of how your body feels. The activity of your mind. And then slowly moving to the other side, bringing your hips to the left, your feet and your shoulders to the right, your left arm overhead, maybe held by the right hand, maybe not. And then again, letting everything go. Letting the tension drain from your body like water from a sponge being soaked up by the earth. And letting your gaze, the direction of your head, be comfortable. And if you like, closing your eyes. And letting any tension that you discover melt away into the ground. When you feel ready, you can slowly move back to center and find a comfortable resting pose or shavasana. So that can be with everything on the earth. You can bend your legs if that feels better, let your knees fall into each other. You can prop yourself up with pillows. You can get a blanket, especially these days when it's quite chilly. A blanket can be really nice. And once you're comfortable, go ahead and let everything go. Know that for the next few moments, no matter what, you are safe, you are loved, and the world is a richer and more beautiful place because of your presence in it. Feel yourself sinking into the earth, the 
for supporting the following your muscles, your head. I'm not saying to do now, but to be here. you to stay in your final resting pose for another few minutes and as you rest I just want to close this practice by offering gratitude to those who have passed on the teachings of yoga through the decades and centuries gratitude to those who continue seeking understanding of our bodies and our minds and how they work in gratitude to you for being brave enough to find out where you are today and to touch base with yourself to touch in without judgment and find out where you are today with acceptance and love and curiosity thank you so much for practicing with me today